السلام عليكم ورحمة الله لعل النظام الغربي عبر منصاته الإعلامية يتقن الكذبة بلا خجل وبمهنية وعلى الدوام هناك الألاف من الأكاذيب التي تتراكم فوق بعضها البعض ويتم تقديمها بلمسات مثالية وبلهجات وعبارات منمقة وجذابة هنالك أكاذيب حول الماضي والحاضر وحتى حول المستقبل هو نظام يعرف كيف يقتل الملايين وأيضا كيف يتلاعب بالشعوب أهلا بكم إلى الجزء الثاني من هذا الحوار من الداخل مع المفكر والروائي الثائر الروسي أندري فالتشيك حيث نستعرض الأدوات الغربية للتلقين والتضليل الإعلامي معكم زينب صفار تابعونا لعل اليوم أكثر من قبل يتم تخصيص أموال ضخمة للهجوم الدعائي ومنشأها في الغالب من عواصم غربية مثل لندن وواشنطن كما يرى مراقبون حيث تم تخصيص ملايين الجنيهات والدولارات وإنفاقها بشكل رسمي وصريح من أجل مواجهة أصوات شعوب روسيا والصين والعالم العربي وإيران وأمريكا اللاتينية أصوات باتت تصل أخيرا إلى الآخرين بين مزدوجين في الجنوب العالمي ويكشف الخبراء في الأوساط الإعلامية أن الغرب يعرف كيف يذبح الملايين وكيف يتلاعب بالجماهير وحملاته الدعائية كانت وما زالت دائما شرسة إذا كان منشأها في الولايات المتحدة الأمريكية أو لعلها تنفذ ببراعة مكيافلية وبفعالية حادة عندما تنطلق من المملكة المتحدة أندري فالتشيك المفكر والروائي الروسي هو باحث يجول ويوثق ما يجري في العالم ويعبر عن ذلك من خلال أفكاره السياسية هو شخص قرر المشاركة واتخاذ الخطوات العملية والانضمام إلى النضال ضد الإمبريالية الغربية والاستعمار الجديد في جميع مظاهره وتجلياته فما هي أفكاره حول الحملة المستمرة ضد وسائل الإعلام المستقلة؟ والبديلة. زينب اكشلي ذا بيست از لوزينج اند اي رود اباوت ات اون سيفرال اوكيجنز اي ثينك وات وي ار اكسبيرينسينج ناو وات وي ار ويتنسينج ناو از اكشلي اوف فير اولموست ايراشنال فير ذا ويسترن استابليشمنت بروباغندا استابليشمنت از فيلينج Because the media outlets, like yours, but of course as RT, CGTN, Telesur, Press TV, uh, is gaining uh, popularity, and people are switching from the traditional indoctrination uh, uh, outlets like the BBC, CNN, uh, and other sources uh, to. Uh, so-called independent media outlets, which are actually not any more uh, marginal. They are huge. Mm -hmm. I mean, RT, CGTN are very big stations. I think your station here uh, in the Arab world is doing very well. I think Press TV is doing very well in London. In, uh, in the English-speaking uh, world. In English-speaking world, yes. Mm -hmm. So uh, uh, it is, uh, we are all working together. More successful we are becoming more vicious are attacks against us uh, from the original and traditional disinformation centers in the West, from New York, from, from London, the corporate media, from, from Paris, the from MSM. corporate media, yes, yes. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, it is, the attacks are tremendous. They are uh, ideological, mm -hmm. but they are also cyber attacks. And, uh, cultural attacks. Cultural attacks uh, uh, and uh, everything. But we are still uh, gaining uh, uh, ground. We are gaining viewers. We are gaining uh, readers. Uh, it is perhaps uh, because even in the West, 
people do not believe anymore what is what they are being told about the world by the corporate media mm -hmm. the difference between the Arab world let's say and the West is that in the Arab world people don't believe it and they never did mm -hmm. uh, but they had no choice because they didn't have any they didn't have al Mayadeen, they didn't have uh, uh, al Akbar, they didn't have uh, uh, press TV next door now they, they, uh, they uh, in the West they used to believe everything but actually West is very indoctrinated uh, mm -hmm. Uh, part of the world. It's really very fundamentalist part of the world. Uh, but you also believe, Andre, that even in revolutionary countries, the media, the mass media, is still in the hands of the right. And that's actually very paradoxical, and you are very correct. Uh, we just witnessed what happened in uh, Brazil. It was tremendous loss for the progressive uh, world, tremendous loss for BRICS, and tremendous loss for, loss for Brazilian people. How did it happen? Many people ask me, how did it happen? I went to Brazil twice recently. And by saying I went to Brazil, I didn't just go to Sao Paulo. I went to oh, Rio de Janeiro. I went to uh, deep Amazonia. I went to the villages outside of Manaus, to Belém, to Salvador Bahia, Fortaleza. And I talked to people who gained so much from PT, from the Partido de Trabajadores, mm -hmm. from the left-wing uh, Workers' Party government of Lula da Silva and uh, Dilma Rousseff. Mm -hmm. And I would talk to people, you know, in a humble villages, and I would say, how is it? How, how is life now? And they would say, it's better. It's really, really, we cannot compare it. It's much better than before. But Dilma has to go. Mm -hmm. and I would ask them, but why? You say this and this and this is better. Your medical care, education, housing, walls of familia, everything, you know, support for children, um, for families, for poor families, everything is better. But you are saying that Dilma, the, your president, should resign. And then I already realized, and it was before the coup uh, of uh, the performed by Temer, uh, that there is something very fundamentally wrong. And what was wrong is that the mass media uh, was portraying the uh, government of Brazil as something that is corrupt. And any success that Brazil would have would be attributed to particular individuals. So they would spread this uh, philosophy, okay, I'm doing better, because you are doing better because you work hard and because, but uh, all the problems are from corrupt uh, government. Government. Hmm. Mm -hmm. So this is propaganda that was spread by O Globo, mm -hmm. uh, Stados. And the me mass media is responsible for such kind of mass propaganda. Mass media everywhere in Latin America, mm -hmm. even in Venezuela. Mm -hmm. I was in Venezuela from the very beginning of uh, of El Proceso, of the Ch uh, revolution of Chavez, and I saw it clearly. In the back rooms of the pubs, the reporters of the big media uh, and uh, newspa newspapers and TV stations were crying to me over beer, saying that they support Chavez, but they cannot express his, their support publicly because they would be fired. Because newspapers and TV stations were actually owned by the right wing. Uh, 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 individuals and they are until now. The same thing is in Bolivia, the same thing is in Ecuador. So um, you land in Quito airport mm -hmm. under a, a still under Korea, uh, Korea's government and mm -hmm. what would you see? CNN in Espanol, mm -hmm. CNN in Spanish. Mm -hmm. In uh, you land in Jorge Chavez in uh, Lima the same thing in Santiago de Chile, in Buenos Aires. It's all Fox in Spanish, yeah. uh, CNN. And you are talking about revolutionary countries like Argentina before under Cristina Kirchner. Mm -hmm. You are talking about Ecuador. You are talking about Bolivia. You are talking even about Venezuela, Cuba being the only exception. Mm -hmm. So basically, they all triggered the war against, this country, against the governments. And I will tell you something about corruption. And again, I wrote about this, but this is really, we, we should repeat this again and again and again. 
The right-wing governments were raping children in front of the eyes of their own parents on behalf of the United States and the West. The right-wing governments, not only that they were corrupting everything, they had everything under control and they were stealing from the poor. So even a rich country like Chile, when Pinochet's dictatorship collapsed, had the biggest disparities between rich and poor in the entire Latin America. But that was never called corruption. Then, look at what happened to Lula. Somebody offered to refurbish his apartment. Mm -hmm. It was not about still giving him apartment, buying it, refurbish his apartment. And they say this is corruption. And he ended up in prison. Mm -hmm. Well, his predecessors and these guys are going to corrupt entire Amazonia. Mm -hmm. Do you know what is happening now in Brazil? The biggest, third biggest producer of the airplanes, civilian airplanes in the world after Airbus and Boeing, is Embroyer Brasilia. Mm -hmm. Third biggest. Do you know what they are going to do to it? They waited, because Haddad was totally against this deal. But they waited to put it uh, in front of the government. Boeing offered them 80% controlling share, basically to kill the company, to take it over, to kill it, and leave to Brazil only corporate jets production and the military jets, mm -hmm. which they are not very famous for. Right. So they, what are they going to do now? They are going to corrupt this enormously successful yeah this airline. dim picture that you're describing andre but recently in mexico for example the mexicans they have voted and overwhelmingly the elected uh, left-wing presidential candidate andres manuel lopez obrador who is considered by many ordinary people and also by many intellectuals to be the last chance for mexico do the people here have faith in the new government? Against all odds, Zeynep, against all odds they voted, against all odds they actually elected left-wing government. Mexico is very tired. It's an old, ancient country. It's one of these big civilizations like India, mm -hmm. like China. Uh, when Spaniards came, it was already one of the most incredible cultural powerhouses in the world and they got totally robbed and they got totally the great cultures the people belonging to these great cultures got marginalized robbed of everything enslaved and until now the difference between the whites who are sitting in their luxury cafes and the indigenous people somewhere in Chiapas or Oaxaca or Yucatan is just tremendous and Mexico was a revolutionary country in the past. And the revolution got totally derailed. And a good old saying that you probably all know, poor Mexico, so far from God and so close to the United States, actually began uh, to show its monstrous uh, uh, consequences. Mexico on the borderline, where I also filmed this time, uh, on the borderline uh, with the United States is the Mexico of maquilladoras, of the uh, factories where people are making uh, pittance, $200 a month maybe. Mm -hmm. uh, working uh, slavery, uh, like slave labor in Philips, in uh, uh, South Korean companies, but also of course in Amer North American companies and so on. So Mexico had enough. So do you think that Obrador is not a poker player like Trump, but he's more of a chess player? That's exactly what I was uh, uh, told by great academics uh, in uh, Uman, uh, Universidad Autónoma de México, that he is a chess player. He is not going to, he's not going, look, he cannot go against uh, the military might of the United States. He cannot defend his country. I saw their independence parade. I was there filming in Mexico City. It's a, I'm sorry to say it, it's a bad joke. I mean, they, are, they have like some kind of a crop dusters um, that look like military planes. Mexico cannot fight mm -hmm. the United States. So the only hope that Mexico has is actually to over smart the United States in a game of chess. Mm -hmm.
And this is what we're going to talk about after the break, which is the Western tools of indoctrination and disinformation, but after the break, Andre. إذا فاصل قصير ونعود إلى تتوبعي. أندري فالتشيك المفكر والروائي الروسي وصانع الأفلام الوثائقية والصحفي الثائر يشرح مدى قوة تأثير الأدوات الغربية الإعلامية في التلقين والتضليل وفعالية حملاتها الدعائية countries in Africa, countries, some countries in the Middle East, or countries like Indonesia or Philippines before uh, Duterte. And look at the, what uh, they actually believe in capitalism. They think that uh, their way is to, they way forward is to become, to continue with the uh, capitalism and uh, so-called market uh, economy. It is because the only source of information they get is from the West. Look at all the newspapers uh, in Latin America, in Africa, in Southeast Asia. What are they? Look at their foreign section. It's all Reuters. It's all AFP. It's all AP. There are no correspondents from these countries. There is no. There are no uh, agencies from Russia, from China, from Latin America itself. So basically, there is a constant barrage and recycling of the same narrative. The narrative uh, is not new. The narrative is there for five, six hundred years. It's a colonialist narrative which mm -hmm. UK, Spain, France used to justify plundering of their uh, of uh, their colonies. The Brits are the best. The Brits are really, uh, uh, I mean, compared to them, the, the American uh, uh, agencies and American newspapers are just very primitive and vulgar, especially TV stations. Brits put propaganda absolutely everywhere. They put it uh, not only to the, uh, you know, BBC or to uh, or to their newspapers or to the, their magazines. I mean, you even go to museums and there is an introduction to everything. You know, I was the other day I was in London and I was, uh, uh, they had a huge uh, exhibition on uh, Soviet art. You are basically taught what to think. It was not just a description of the artwork, it was mm -hmm. introduction. Mm -hmm. uh, two days ago in Stuttgart, I listened to one of the most beautiful pieces of music ever written uh, in the 20th century, which is uh, uh, Shostakovich's uh, 11th Symphony, which is actually the symphony about the 1905 revolution. I wanted to spread it. Uh, to my friends after I came back to hotel and I just went to YouTube and what did I find? First of all, the British interpretation, so before they even let you listen to classical music, they tell you what to think about Shostakovich and about 1905 revolution and mm -hmm. everything. So there is an absolute, uh, uh, or you take... Uh, disinformation. Total disinformation and total manipulation of everything, through films, through pop, through, uh, I mean, we all know what, uh, what, uh, how far and wide this propaganda is. Even uh, such magazines and newspapers like Paris Review that we thought was tremendously progressive and many great writers, actually exiles from the United States, were writing uh, for Paris Review living in Paris. The ex-chief editor went recently on the record and said that it was funded uh, by CIA. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Now, in a similar vein, Andre, how does the West manufacture opposition movements and how do they get implanted in so many different parts of the world? Okay, well, first of all, one more thing I wanted to say that these are not amateurs, you know, people who do all these things are very highly professional they have human to be. beings. Mm -hmm. You know, a few years ago I was in Pretoria and Johannesburg, uh, I was the only philosopher invited to the uh, a huge international conference of psychiatrists because they wanted me to describe the wars. And I mingled with hundreds of psychiatrists from all over the world. And I was shocked. I was told how 
what does the uh, that even psychology is used, psychology and psychiatry mm -hmm. is used to torture. Uh, I heard about it, but I never heard it from directly from scientists, that it's used to manipulate the brains of people. And these are not conspiracy theories. These are highly professional psychologists. Yeah, the psychology of the words Talk and the terminology, what to spread. Exactly, exactly. Mm -hmm. What is effective and, uh, and what is not. Uh, now, what the West is doing to implant this, this kind of uh, opposition, movements. opposition movements, I mean, again, I'm following this already uh, for years, and I wrote 840-page book called uh, Exposing Lies of the Empire, where I followed every attempt of the West, uh, successful and unsuccessful, uh, to do it. Well, again, it's, uh, uh, they uh, play on the lowest uh, human uh, uh, kind of... Uh, feelings they they uh, talk about corruption they talk about uh, uh, the brutality of regime which they don't like they create entire hype about uh, uh, how terrible are governments that they are opposing look I know I was a victim of it because I am uh, a Soviet boy you know I was grow growing up in Czech I was born in Soviet Union but I I was growing up in Czechoslovakia just 50 kilometers from Bavaria. We were literally bombarded by all these radio stations like Voice of America, Radio Free Europe. It was incredible. It was impossible to escape. And they, uh, I left Czechoslovakia as a young, stupid dissident. And it took me some couple of years to get my brains back to, the, to uh, where they belong. But uh, they basically manufacture millions of uh, young people. They, they hit on their desire to have something. Uh, uh, at that time, it was jeans, it was the uh, latest LPs of Pink Floyd, it was uh, things like that. Now we have different, uh, we have different things that uh, they desire. But it's, they always try to convince young people that they want freedom. Mm -hmm. What is freedom? Freedom is... Uh, Above all, not to be scared of what the next day brings. Freedom is a space, a time to sit down and think. But that's not how they, uh, for them, freedom is number politi of well, political parties. Well, you cannot eat political parties. If you have 40 political parties, like in Indonesia or in Kenya, and all of them are defending big business, how democratic it is. Democracy is a rule of the people, nothing else. It doesn't say anywhere that it's 40 or 50 or 100 parties. But what is essential is to be able to think, to have a breathing space, to have a... Mm -hmm. Uh, ability to to understand things and they take this away they cover these co poor countries with noise with their own pop uh, own pop music which brings nothing so at the end it's just uh, enormous uh, you know overwhelming sounds but no time and no capacity to really think right uh, andre velchik russian novelist filmmaker thinker revolutionary writer and internationalist many thanks indeed for your perspectives and your insights sir thank you so much Sina. always for always pleasure, pleasure. pleasure. To be thank you my dear idan liqa jadid fi al-usbu' al-muhul ma' dayf jadid wa qadiya jadida wa da'ima min al-dakhil lil mazid min al-tawassul baridna the inside at almayadin.net wa safhatuna ala al-facebook min al-dakhil min kull fariq amal al-barnamaj min kull al-mayadin assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullah